Hey guys, welcome to my fabulous world. It's another day, another opportunity to connect with you. I always love this moment of connecting with you. Remember to subscribe, to click notifications, to like, to write your comments. We always love reading your comments. And as you know, sometimes I respond to your comments. So engage us in there and share with your friends. Today, I thought I should share with you some of the things that I wish someone had taught me before I became an adult. You know, I keep collecting these things because it's important to mark the lessons. And throughout in this podcast, I'll keep sharing things that I wish someone had taught me before I became an adult. And today, I have four of them. Number one, you won't be a millionaire or CEO straight out of varsity. You know, when we are at varsity, and we're studying, we're working hard. We always think that what we're doing is so amazing. We're doing this degree that's unique and we're so good, we're getting top marks. And you think when you get out, you're going to be CEO or you're going to be a millionaire. The truth is, you may not. Because in fact, there are many, many other people who are doing what you are doing, some of whom passed the degree that you are doing 20 years ago, 10 years ago, they have experience that you don't have. And so they'll be ahead of you. So in fact, you've got to prepare yourself to work for someone, not even to report to the CEO. If you do, you are so damn lucky. So I hope you learn this. And there is nothing wrong when you get out of varsity, not to be a manager, a director, to report to someone. Lessons in humility are always important. Number two, it's okay to cry. You know, I used to think that not crying in front of other people was strength. I have now learned that being vulnerable is strength. In fact, you'll be surprised. I learned that lesson whilst I was vice chancellor. And that's not long ago. That's after I turned 50. And that's because, you know, I grew up in a family, in a not so wealthy family, in a township and in the village. And you are taught to be strong. There's no time to cry. You must get on and do it. And if you go to school and you come back crying, either because your peers were fighting you and they beat you up, you can't come back crying. If you come back crying, you'll be told to toughen up, to fight back, to stand your ground, to be strong. So you grow up with this message that you have to be strong, that crying shows that you are weak. And so you think that you've got to do that all along. And of course, you go through university. You fight. You fight your way through. Anyone Anyone wants to bully you, fight. And so you get to the workplace and people bully you and you don't cry. You fight back. And because you fight back, nobody thinks that you deserve any protection. Everybody sees you as the bully because you don't allow vulnerability. You fight back. You protect yourself. That's not a good thing. So today, I tell you, all young people, especially women, it is okay to cry. Guys, it is okay to be vulnerable. Don't think that you have to fight back all the time. I'm not saying cry at every drop of a pin. But when things are tough, it is okay to cry. Don't do what I did, where I even told my boss, you can fire me. I dared him to fire me. So you wish you cried at that point? I wish I had cried. That is one moment in my tenure as vice chancellor that I should have cried. I should have walked out of that room and I should have cried. And if I did that, it would have changed the narrative. Yeah. But because I stood my ground, I dared them to fire me. They saw me as the problem. 
rather than what they are doing to me. Some so in Bogota. Of course, we've got to be in Bogota. Some so in Bogota, but right in that meeting, I was told, you are a fighter, right? You want to fight. And even though I said I'm not a fighter, but I'm not going to allow you to treat me that way. It doesn't matter. The point is, I was, I was pushed to the limit. I was bullied wholesale. And I didn't succumb. Uh, that was the moment to be vulnerable. Number three, the journey to finding true love is never easy. You will often find the wrong person, and I mean the really wrong one, that when you look back, you wonder, what were you thinking? You will get hurt and wonder whether you will ever find love at all. In the process, you are, you are, you are being shaped by higher powers, so that when you find the right person, you'll be able to treasure every aspect of what they have to offer. You know, in the journey to find love, you meet other people. And you know, when you meet other people that you fall in love with, some of them will teach you about yourself, will teach you about what you prefer, about what's good for you, about what works for you. And so when you meet the people that you call the wrong people, when you fall in love with the wrong people, don't consider it a waste of time. Consider it an important lesson or an important part of your journey to love. Because what makes you identify them as the wrong person is those things that you are not willing to put up with. So pause, write them down, and know that I'm not willing to put up with a person who does this and that and that. And then ask yourself, how am I going to identify whether the next person has got these things or not? Because that will help you not to fall in love with exactly the same person over and over again. So it's never a waste of time. It's a journey to love. It's not an easy journey because in the process, you learn about yourself, you learn to love yourself, and you learn what you prefer and what you could live with for a long time. Mm -hmm. Last one, number four. Don't seek money. Rather be ambitious and empower yourself at every chance you get. In this way, money will seek you out on your own terms. All of us would love a situation where money seeks us out in our own terms. And in our own terms is important. Because remember, not everyone who gets money gets it in their own terms. Sometimes people have to do things that they don't like doing to make a lot of money. Things that you and I will never want to do at all. And they have to do them because that's the only way they can make that amount of money. Now, you want to work smart in such a way that money seeks you in your own terms. So don't seek it because if you seek money, you chase money at all costs. You'll be willing to do anything just to get the money. Am I saying sit there and not have any job simply because you don't like the job that's coming? No. You're going to do some work to earn money. And sometimes you do the job that you don't like for just a few, a, a short time, so that you can do the job that you like for longer. So be careful about what you're chasing. When you have a job that you like, it's not paying you gazillions of money. And you recruited to some job that you don't like. A 
and it's going to give you lots of money. Ask yourself, am I willing to sell my soul for this job? Am I willing to do this kind of work for my job? The best position to be at is to have money seeking you at your own terms. As you know, my favorite line is, don't make money decisions, make career decisions. If you make career decisions, money will seek you at your own terms. Well, those are the four things that I wish someone had told me before I became an adult. You want to ask me something, guys? There's a quote that I once read and it says, uh, don't get paid for your time, get paid for your skill. Yes. Aim to get paid for your skill. Get paid. I mean, that's an interesting thing because that quote, I, I didn't know that quote, but that quote actually put a spanner in the works in, in, in people who say, uh, I've done my 40 hours a week, so pay me. People who count the amount of time they spend in the office and want to be paid for that rather than counting what they have done. And if you focus on what you have done, then you're focusing on a career. Because you're saying, I've done this, I've achieved this, I've achieved that, I've... then I deserve a bonus or I deserve to be paid. If you're only counting the hours, you're focusing on a job because a job is just about the number of hours. It's not about delivering anything. It's not about building you in any way. Uh, you have a commitment with your employer. You, 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 you've done so many hours and therefore they should pay you. As to how you have done in the 40 hours, doesn't matter. So focus on the skill, being paid for the skill rather than for the time. I think that's a good one. Guys, it was nice connecting with you today. I'll see you tomorrow. In the meantime, be yourself, love yourself, and do yourself. See you tomorrow. Bye-bye.